It's like the Academy Awards for Unsung Heroes in Public Service. The annual CAFRITS Awards honors outstanding performers in the D.C. government. Washington Full Circle starts right now. They are dedicated public servants in the district government, each driven by extraordinary pride and persistence in making D.C. a better place to live and work, the winners of this year's CAFRITS Awards. With us is Jim Robinson, who heads up the program, and Sean Murray Egan, a past award winner. Thanks so much to you gentlemen for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Now, first of all, for those who aren't familiar with it, uh, tell us what the CAFRITS Awards is all about. Well, the CAFRITS Awards, the idea for the awards uh, came about in 1999. And uh, it was an idea uh, from uh, uh, director of our center, Herb Tillery then, and mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Calvin CAFRITS. Okay. And the idea was that so much uh, acrimony, so much negative publicity uh, was done uh, with regard to DC employees, that it was easy to overlook the fact that there were so many dedicated employees in D.C. government, but yet nobody was recognizing what they did. So they were truly, as you said, uns unsung heroes. Right. And so that was the impetus for the idea. Okay. So then uh, you're with uh, George Washington University, yes. so you partnered with Kayfridge, who was a, a, a major funder of that's, the program. That's correct. So uh, the Kayfridge Foundation is the funder of the program. Mm -hmm. uh, they make available uh, the funds to, uh, for the entire process of selection, of, uh, of uh, doing publication, of uh, promoting the awards. Mm -hmm. uh, and each award winner also receives $7,500. Wow. <laughs> which is, which is a, a, That's not, not a minor change. detail, yes, <laughs> yes. Now, speaking of award winners, we have a past award winner, Mr. Egan. Now, your claim to fame at DC Fire uh, and EMS was, uh, I read a, a couple of things. Uh, one, that you were a hard worker, and two, you were dedicated to changing something about uh, the fire hydrants in DC. Tell us about that. So, uh, the award ceremony actually recognized myself for uh, three initiatives that uh, I was allowed to uh, develop uh, through our administration. One of those was the fire hydrants here in the city of the uh, District of Columbia. Uh, there was a number of areas throughout the city that the, the entire system was in disarray. Uh, it uh, targeted neighborhoods. Uh, they became high risk. Uh, it was a threat assessment that we looked uh, about trying to improve safety for our personnel. Uh, so we, uh, we developed an initiative uh, working with uh, some of our counterparts, uh, those being uh, DC Water and DC Octo. Uh, we uh, leveraged uh, $50,000 of uh, IT infrastructure that was already um, uh, in, in the city, but uh, was worth uh, approximately $5 million if we had started cold, um, just because of the, what, uh, the accomplishments that we had done. So we went out, we uh, made those uh, vulnerability assessments uh, citywide and uh, came back, develop a plan. Uh, we brought the agency directors to the table. We presented the plan and the plan uh, we were able to develop. Uh, we knew that it was going to expand. It had, um, we were uh, recognized by uh, ISO, which is an insurance services uh, organization that uh, helps rate and values uh, insurances uh, uh, throughout the country uh, with the insurance industry. Uh, they came back to us and said, we had never seen a program so aggressive anywhere in the United States uh, and a collaborative effort amongst agencies to ensure that we are moving forward in the right direction. Amazing. Still a lot of work needs to be done. Yeah, and also uh, with the Toys for Tots yes. program, which everyone has heard of, yes. you were instrumental in the beginning of that program. Yes, uh, actually uh, what happened uh, early uh, 2000, uh, we reached out to uh, the United States Marine Corps uh, located in Anacostia and we wanted to partner with them and uh, be able to uh, continue the community outreach uh, and the goodwill of what that program was. Uh, the first two years uh, were extremely challenging for us. I couldn't get any airtime or any PSAs afforded to us uh, to be able to promote the program and say, bring the toys to the firehouse and we'll turn them into the Marine Corps. Um, the president of SunTrust Bank came to me 
uh, and he says, uh, you're looking for some airtime? He <laughs> says, everybody likes a fireman. He says, you get the regional fire departments to do it and to sign up. And he says, I'll provide all the airtime that you need. That turned in nine of the regional partners standing up to the plate with the fire chief, shoulder to shoulder, <laughs> going out and implementing probably the largest humanitarian aid program logistically during a non-emergency crisis uh, anywhere in the country. Uh, today it still maintains to be a tremendous model. Uh, the outreach uh, goes um, uh, the way that the program is structured. I have to deal with uh, Quantico Marine Base and Anacostia. Uh, the toys that we collect in the city stay in the city. Um, mm, yeah. And uh, I, I, I gotta tell you what, uh, at the end of the day, when we come to Christmas and we're at home with our families, uh, we've known that we've done the right thing for our community that uh, needs that help. Excellent. Now, Mr. Robinson, you, you, this program not only recognizes uh, people that are doing an extraordinary job in, in the district government, but it also it, it looks at these people that are doing things that touches so many people, like Toys yes. for Tots, exactly. like the fire hydrant uh, issue, which was a dangerous uh, situation for uh, the D.C. government. How do you get all of the, uh, the nominations and, yes. uh, to determine people like this? We have uh, a lot of cooperation from the D.C. Department of Human Resources. Mm -hmm. Uh, as well as the mayor's office. So we publicize the awards every year. The mayor sends out an email to all DC employees. The, all of the um, HR staff uh, pub promote and publicize the program in agencies. So then we begin to receive nominations. Right. And uh, people can be nominated, they can nominate themselves, but often they're nominated by their bosses. We're, we're going to talk about, because that's, that's yeah. a process we're going to learn about, but okay. stay with us. Uh, up next, another past KFRITZ winner uh, joins us when Washington Full Circle returns. We'll be right back. And welcome back. We're talking about the annual KFRITZ Awards with Jim Robinson. Joining us now is Beatrice Willier, a prior award winner from DC's Child and Family Services Agency. Thanks so much, Ms. Willier, for joining us. Thank you for having me. And congratulations for your past win. Thank you. Now, you, I, I hate to say this, your claim to fame uh, is with uh, children and families in, in the district. Tell us about the one thing you're most proud of uh, that you uh, was able to manage at the DC Child and Family Services? Well, the thing I'm most proud of is to be able to establish our program called Partners for Kids in Care. And it's an innovative and unique program in which we engage um, Washington, D.C. residents and community members as well as caring individuals to give back to the children and youth at Child and Family Services. And it is designed like a quasi nonprofit. And I'm happy to say that 100% of all donations go directly to serve the families and children uh, that we serve at Child and Family. So I'm really proud of that um, because we're able to give 100% of the proceeds uh, to the children because our overhead is paid for by district government. Now I read that you were concerned about uh, foster care children, the stigma attached to that. Sometimes when unfortunate things happen to uh, young kids, the whole process of when they're uh, out of their home is kind of rough for them. You were always concerned about that. Yes, in many cases, um, because children are taken out of crisis situations, um, the way they come to the agency with only um, trash bags, their belongings in a trash bag. And our mm. motto is fervently that trash bags are for trash, not for beautiful children. And so we make it a point that every child that comes into care is treated with dignity and they receive um, new, brand new clothes. They receive pajamas. They put, uh, receive a comfort case. We've partnered with the group called Comfort Cases where um, each child gets this beautiful case uh, with love and warmth where they have blankets and they have activities so that um, when they're you know, taken out of a traumatic situation, they're brought into an environment of love and nurturing. Excellent. Now, how did you hear about uh, the KFRITZ Awards and that you were a nominee that year that you uh, were presented? 
Well, I got the news that I was nominated and have been familiar with the Kafritz Awards and never thought, you know, that I would ever be a winner myself. And I was just um, so honored to be recommended and to, um, to see all of the wonderful and kind things, particularly that our community partners uh, said about me as well as we have a Partners for Kids advisory board mm -hmm. to hear uh, distinguished members of the community, business owners, leaders in the community to say um, and to speak to the work that I was doing was quite an honor. Now, Mr. Robinson, for uh, awards like these, the nominations, do they have to come from people in the District of Columbia government, or is it from people in the community or both? Both, all okay. of the above. Yeah, from people in government, they come from uh, residents of the District of Columbia, they come from nonprofit organizations, uh, uh, profit uh, corporations that are partnered with uh, people like Beatrice. Uh -huh. So uh, they come from all over the place. Yeah. Now, what's the process of going from nomination to winner? How is that determined, and who determines it? Well, the process is, uh, is, is pretty standard. It's set. And basically, the process is we notify each person who has been nominated, because often, often they're not aware <laughs> that they've been nominated. And then we invite them to submit a portfolio. Uh, they write uh, a, a, an essay uh, documenting what they've accomplished, what they're proud of, the things they want to highlight. They then uh, get formal recommendations from others that they invite, two or three uh, recommendations. They put together their resumes. They put together their job descriptions. So there's a lot of documentation that goes into creating this portfolio. Once the portfolio is created, then we have a panel that is a screening committee mm -hmm. that goes through perhaps 150 to 200 nominees. Wow. Uh, and their job is to screen them down to about 20 to 25, what we call finalists. Finalists. So you went from a finalist to a winner. Now, I described it as uh, the Academy Award to, uh, uh, for district government employees. What was that night like for you, uh, the presentation of the awards? I think that's a perfect way to describe <laughs> it. Uh, one, I want to really commend the Kayfords Foundation and Jim and his um, wonderful staff. The event, it was such a classy affair. It was just done with such professionalism. And you really do feel like a star for the <laughs> evening. And it was just, it was so exciting and so humbling and, um, and so fulfilling. Yep. Now, what do you generally hear uh, from the, uh, the nominees and the winners after uh, the award show is over. Do you keep in contact with them? Or th do some people get nominated more than once? Yes, uh, we have uh, people who are nominated more than once and uh, we have a number of people who uh, have been three or four years in nomination process. Um, but we do keep in touch with all of the winners. We keep in touch also with our finalists. Uh, we make sure they get our newsletters. We invite them to events. Uh, sometimes they serve as um, speakers at a number of our leadership training events. Um, so we try to maintain a constant contact with them. Now for the big night itself, uh, what kind of planning goes into that? It's, because I've seen it on tape and we've covered some of them. It's, it's like the Oscars. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, our program director is Kate Pitibratova and she does an extensive job. Uh, First of all, what we have to do is with each of the winners, we do a video clip, uh, not only of them, but of people who want to te testify or talk about them. Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, editing that video clip down <laughs> to a manageable three minute clip is extremely challenging. Uh, but we do that, we also promote the event. Uh, we also um, uh, enable the winners and others to, to invite uh, people to come and attend the event as well. So there's a lot of publicity, a lot of work in putting the program together. Excellent. Uh, all of that goes into okay. it. Okay. Well, we've got more to talk about. We'll have another uh, Kayford's winner. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay with us. Uh, Jose Colon, Jr., winner from the 11th Annual Kayford's Awards, joins us when Washington Full Circle returns. Welcome back. IT software specialist Jose Colon Jr.'s 
talent and dedication at DC's Department of Transportation was recognized at the 11th Annual CAFRITS Awards. Thank you so much for joining us to talk about that stellar year. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, give us an idea of one of the, the major accomplishments that you had uh, during that time when you were nominated. Yes, so uh, public space permitting and enforcement, it's a big issue and topic in DC. Mm -hmm. And uh, seven years ago, uh, it was all a paper driven process. Imagine. And <laughs> so going down to the permit, permit office to, to get a permit to do work in public space was quite the challenge. Uh, so we set out to develop an electronic system, web-based system that would allow the public to apply from the comfort of their home or office and uh, have some of those permits automatically be issued. Um, so we built a system called TOPS, Transportation mm -hmm. Online Permitting System. I like that. <laughs> and, um, and it's really, it's evolved in seven years. It's come a long way. Just last year alone, 95,000 applications were submitted to the permit office. Terrific. And, uh, and they were all processed. And, uh, one of the other features of the system is that it also monitors uh, curbside management. Mm -hmm. So uh, applying for uh, reserved space for either moving truck, a moving container, or even construction staging can be accomplished through the system. Uh, so maybe you've taken notice, but throughout the city, the emergency parking signs are pretty standard now. So when you see them, they look legitimate and exactly. official. Exactly, yeah. And so that's, that's what we did. And that's something that happens. D.C. is sort of a, a transient city for some areas and for some parts of the population. So someone's always moving mm -hmm. from one place to another. But it used to be that whole process of getting those signs so that you could park your truck and move was always going down that's right. to do that. But now it's fully automated. And most people weren't even aware that a permit was required. Um, so you have people that actually would go to the hardware store and just post up their own signs. <laughs> and uh, so, yes, yeah, so that was, you can imagine, that was pretty, that was very frustrating. And parking is a hot commodity in the city, right? Right. Um, so, so we've been able to, to do a better job regulating. How difficult was it to automate that system? Uh, you're an IT person, but mm -hmm. that's a daunting task, I would think. Well, um, putting together the resources, <laughs> collecting the requirements, um, there were some challenges, sometimes pushback from the end users and concern that we were going to automate the process and people were going to lose jobs, and which was not the case at all. Uh, the office has, has actually grown uh, and from, I believe, 15 <coughs> employees now to 40 uh, at the permit office. Um, but um, getting the buy-in and just, it was just, you know, the proof of concept and once the system was in place, um, it, you could see that the process was more efficient and effective. Amazing. And then, so senior management just continued to support me. Jose is understating <laughs> uh, the challenge of this project. Mm -hmm. He had so many stakeholders, so many people and agencies, private industry that had to be involved, vendors, contractors, mm -hmm. that pulling this off the way he did in the time frame that he did it was incredible. <laughs> incredible. So he's not only IT specialist, he's a diplomat, <laughs> uh, he's a change strategist. I mean, it's just an incredible undertaking. Now you get all of these uh, nominations across your desk. Are you sometimes amazed that, you know, you thought someone had done it all, but then you get another one and... Exactly. I think, uh, and our, the people that do our screening are all people who've had experience in local government. Um, and so they understand the intricacies of what it takes to do a project um, that Jose did in the time frame that he did it at the level of quality that he did it. So they understand what it really takes. Yes. Uh, and so that's the part that's overwhelming. And uh, you see so many people that their life passions and they overcome all obstacles mm -hmm. uh, as Beatrice did uh, to make her program work. So that's what's so inspiring and so uplifting. Now you often hear, and, and you mentioned it earlier, uh, that the beginning of the of the KFRT Awards is doing something to change the image of uh, government employees, district government employees. Uh, is it hard sometimes to get young people interested in public service? What do you hear when you're out there? Well, uh, you mean as far as uh, do you hear negative things? Right. About these? Well, yes, we do, and we do, and that was one of the things I wanted to help put a system in place to kind of help build up the integrity of the office. Um, you know, it's, we were talking about permitting and licensing, you know, that's, uh, which is, uh, you know, during that time, especially when we were looking at building the system, um, the economy was booming. Uh, and, uh, and, and I think we're doing well now as, you know, it's, it's, it's all coming back uh, to DC. 
but um, but you would hear you would hear negativity, uh, you know, negative uh, remarks made by um, folks that were visiting the office, and you know, that, uh, some things I can't say on TV, <laughs> 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 or, or better left to not said at all. Um, but I think now, though, I, I see and in, in you know the. The mayor's office has put a program in place called uh, Gray DC, mm -hmm. and um, it's amazing to see how many um, positive uh, comments are being made about the permitting office today, and and people are saying, oh, it's so efficient now, and the process was easy, and I did it all online, and it was just streamlined, and so um, so that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Now we we talked about the uh, the prize money, and but I wanted to know: Are there any stipulations with the the money once uh, someone wins this award for being uh, the best? Uh, no, there are no <laughs> strings attached. <laughs> no, no stipulations. Well, well, that's good to hear. I appreciate your coming to talk about the awards and uh, some of the past winners to come and talk with us about that. Thank you. You are to both welcome. Of you so Thank much. you so much for Thank having you. us. Well, uh, that's all the time we have for today, but thanks to all the past Capritz Award winners who joined us today. But before we go, a look at this year's winners. Congratulations to them all.